I know that this is a season right now where a lot of us homeschool moms are wrapping up the past homeschool year and starting to think about what next the next school year is going to look like. Maybe you're already researching curriculum, maybe you've already purchased your curriculum for next year, but we're starting to think about what curriculum we want to use in the upcoming school year. Maybe you're starting to think about activities that you want your kids to participate in in the upcoming school year. And perhaps you're already thinking about schedules. Maybe your schedule or routine last year didn't work very well and you're thinking, how can I change things and make things um, work a little bit better so it's more efficient and we have more time to get school done and all the household chores and activities. So you're thinking about a new schedule or routine for next year as well. And so since we are in kind of that mindset of planning for the upcoming school year, I thought it would be um, a great time to share with you something that I think is really important for us to consider while we are choosing curriculum, while we are planning for activities for our kids to participate in in the upcoming school year, while we are thinking about a new schedule or routine. And that is having yearly goals. I think it's really important for us to think about yearly goals that we have. Now, I know in the homeschool community, we talk a lot about having long-term goals, having a vision for our homeschool and, and what that looks like. And that is great. Those are That is important to have a vision and a long-term goal. And that does come into play when choosing curriculum and choosing what activities to participate in and planning schedules and routines. But I think that what we often forget is thinking about yearly goals. Uh, every single year as I get started um, looking at curriculum and, and planning activities and planning a schedule, I think about what are my yearly goals? What goals do I wanna accomplish with my family? And what goals do I wanna accomplish with each of my individual children in this upcoming school year? And this makes a huge difference in the course that we end up taking in terms of curriculum and activities and schedule. And so let me just kind of walk you through what that looks like and why having yearly goals would even affect or really Really make a big difference in the things um, that we're deciding for next year. So first let me talk about what these yearly goals actually are. So I think it's important to have one yearly goal for your whole family, uh, uh, just a goal that you're going to have for your entire family for that particular school year. Maybe this is a year where you need to work on family unity and you have got a lot of conflict in your home and you say this is the year that we are going to get to the root of these conflicts and of these heart issues, we're going to spend time um, building family unity and learning good conflict resolution uh, skills and how to get along and how to love each other in our family. So you're going to work on family unity. That's your big family goal. Maybe your family goal for the homeschool year is just to get out and explore the area around you. Do more field trips. Be more hands-on this year. Maybe it's do more science experiments, but some kind of goal that you have for your entire family that you're going to work towards and make a priority in the next school year. Then you also want to have, I'd say one, maybe two uh, goals for each child. Maybe you have a particular child who's really struggling in reading and you said you think this is the year we are gonna make reading a priority. If nothing else gets done, reading is the priority for this child. Maybe you have a child who um, has done really well in all their subjects uh, over the years, they're just moving along, but you're noticing that school has just become really dry and boring to them. Maybe for that child, you want, really want to focus on this year bringing life and excitement and joy to their learning experience. So um, each, each child is going to have one or two goals that you're gonna be working towards for them for this next school year, and then one goal for your family. So how does that really affect or change the curriculum that we're buying, um, the activities that we're choosing to participate in, or the schedule and the routine that we're planning? Well, let me give you three different examples. So the first example is really looking at that family goal, that one family goal that you have, and maybe that is to build family unity. Well, if you wanna build family unity, you need to be together. I know that sometimes we think family unity is best um, accomplished by keeping the family apart because then they're not arguing and bickering and fighting. But if we really wanna build family unity, we have to be together. 
another. We have to have opportunities for those conflicts to arise so that we can work through them. We have to have opportunities where we're having fun and making family memories. And so when it comes to choosing curriculum and activities in your schedule, this goal of family unity is going to come into play. Um, for example, with your curriculum, if your goal is to build family unity, then you probably want to have at least one or two subjects that you are doing all together with all of your children at the same time. History and science, read alouds are um, one, uh, just a few of the great ways that you can kind of combine a whole bunch of ages and grades together and learn together at the same time. And that's going to help build shared experiences, which then are going to help build family unity. So if you have this goal of family unity, it's going to affect the curriculum you purchase, but it's also going to affect the activities that you choose to do the next school year. If you want to build family unity, it's not going to happen as easily and as well if you have each of your children in one or two different activities and you're spending all afternoon or all of your day dropping this kid off at this event and then this one off at this event, picking that kid up and taking them over here while the other one's getting dropped off over here. There's no opportunity for shared experiences. So you're gonna wanna choose activities where your family can do all of them, uh, your family can do that activity all together and you can build those shared experiences. So it will affect the activity that you participate in. It's also going to affect your schedule as well. When you're scheduling out your routine for the day, again, you're going to want to be intentional about thinking about providing opportunities in your schedule for being together as a family. So let's look at another example. Say last year you focused on family unity, but this year you really want to focus on helping your children develop their God-given interests and talents. Maybe you have a child who loves horses, and so you just want to let them run with that. You're gonna pick curriculum that um, maybe has is more of a um, unit study, right? And it's gonna be focused on horses and the history of horses and how horses were used in war. And they're gonna do activities where they're maybe gone from the family because they're at horse riding lessons or learning how to care for horses. And of course, your schedule is gonna reflect that. If you're helping your kids build their uh, different interests and talents, they're probably going to be in different places and your schedule's gonna be a little bit more uh, split up and running here and there. But maybe that's your goal for this year is for your kids to develop their own interests and talents. That's the main focus. And so the curriculum you buy the activities you do and the schedule you have are going to reflect that goal. And now that doesn't mean that because this year you're focused on um, developing individual gifts and talents that you totally throw unity out the window, family unity. No, we're always still working on so many different aspects of our kids, physical, emotional, spiritual, um, and academic growth. But when I'm talking about yearly goals, I'm saying let's look at this year, what are what's the main thing? What are we gonna make the main thing for our family? What are I gonna make the main thing for each of my children? I think this really helps us to stay focused and feel like at the end of the year, when that year is over, we can look back and say, you know, yeah, maybe we didn't get very far in these other things, but those weren't our goals. This was our goal. We worked at it hard. It was our focus. We were determined and we reached it, or at least we got pretty close to reaching it. So. Um, it really, again, is really important to have yearly goals for our family and for each of our children. So another example of this is gonna be more focused on those individual um, goals for each of our children. So having one or two yearly goals for each child. So for example, maybe you have um, a child who is really, really struggling with language. They're struggling with reading, they're struggling with talking. Um, and so you are going to invest a lot of your time and a lot of your um, money probably into helping that child gain some good language skills. So when it comes to choosing curriculum, you're probably gonna pick a curriculum that is just maybe one of the better, sometimes more expensive, not always, but one of the better um, and possibly more teacher intensive reading curriculums um, and language curriculums and spelling curriculums. Maybe, um, you're going to then activity-wise have to take your child to speech therapy or some other kind of um, 
help in getting them up to speed in their language skills. And so obviously that's gonna affect your schedule as well. So um, because you are spending so much time focused on language and reading and, and going to speech therapy, you might not be able to make as much progress in those other subjects, but that's okay because those subjects aren't your focus. They're not your yearly goal. Your goal is to get your child um, reading well, speaking well, and understanding the English language well. That's your goal, that's your focus, that's what you're gonna work on. You're not gonna not, not do anything else. Of course, you're gonna start, still try to make progress in math and in science and history, but if you can't get to all those things one day and you think I can only get to one thing, get to the language with that child. And so like I said, you might be spending more money purchasing curriculum that is um, for language and, and teaching your child to read and then might have might not have enough money to pe uh, for you know math or science, and you might have to piece that together. Perhaps you have another child who is really struggling with math, and so you are going to make your yearly goal that you really pour into that child and really help them with math. Maybe that's buying a particular math curriculum that's going to maybe help them in the areas that they're struggling. Maybe that's buying extra manipulative, extra math games for them to do to make math more exciting and come alive. Maybe when you're looking at your schedule, you're realizing, I need to make more time in my day to do these fun math activities and reinforcement activities with my child because we, we can't just you know, do the worksheet for math, check it off and say we're done. We really need to invest more time in doing fun things to reinforce math concepts, reinforce learning math facts. And so you're gonna to need to adjust your schedule accordingly. Uh, maybe you have another child and you said, my yearly goal for this child is that they would just love history. Maybe this is a child who has moved along in history, they've learned facts, um, but they hate it, they absolutely hate history, and you want them to love history. Maybe your goal for that child this year is just to give them a love for history, and so maybe you're gonna let them help you choose a history curriculum, give them some options and say which one interests you more. Maybe you're going to tweak and change the curriculum a little bit so that it's more interesting and fun and exciting for that child. Um, maybe the activities that you're going to do this year are going to be things where you're going out on field trips and learning about history hands on. And of course that's gonna affect your schedule if you're gonna be out and about making history exciting for them. So. It's, again, do you see how it is really important as we set yearly goals for our family and for each of our children, it's really gonna help us as we make decisions on curriculum, on activities, and on the schedule that we're going to have. Yearly goals also keep us from feeling overwhelmed because as homeschool moms, we want to do it all. We want to cover everything. We want to give our kids the best education we possibly can. And we so often burn ourselves out and at the end of the year feel like we made absolutely no progress in any area at all. Today we were focused on math. Yesterday we were focused on language. Tomorrow we're gonna to try to do the whole day of science because we haven't done science in a whole month and we are just all over the place. And so having yearly goals really gives us a good focus. It really just reigns us in and says, this is what we're gonna focus on this year. These are our goals for this year. Yes, we might not get to these other subjects um, as often. Yes, we might not make a ton of progress in these other areas, but we can tackle those and make those our yearly goals next year or the following year after that. So help, uh, Having yearly goals really helps us to stay focused and to, at the end of the year, be able to look back and go, we did make progress. We made leaps and bounds in this these one or two areas. And the reason you can make leaps and bounds in those one or two areas is because you were intentional about tackling them every single day, every single week throughout the year. Having yearly goals gives you consistency in your homeschool in those particular subjects or activities um, or 
in building family unity, it gives you consistency in addressing um, those issues. When you are having the most stressful day and you are so overwhelmed and you feel like you can't get anything done, you can stop, you can take a breath and say, remind my, let me remind myself of my yearly goals. Okay, that's right. I wanted this child to, uh, we wanted to focus on reading and this child, we were gonna focus on math. So then I can stop and say, if we get nothing else done, I'm gonna do reading with this child, I'm gonna do math with this child. And, it, and then we can be okay with the day because we know we were working towards reaching those goals. Um, it is great to have long-term goals. It is great to want to give our kids an excellent education in every single subject there is, in every single aspect of their lives, in developing all of their gifts and talents, um, helping them grow spiritually, emotionally, physically, <laughs> academically, and everything, but we can't do um, that every single year we can't do everything and teach our kids all of that and help them in all of that with excellence. So it's great to have yearly goals so we can be focused on being intentional about doing something and working towards a goal and doing it with excellence because we have the energy to do it with excellence because we're not running all over the place trying to juggle a hundred different things at once and trying to get our kids to do this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. They're overwhelmed, we're overwhelmed. It's great, yearly goals are great. So I hope that encourages you to sit down maybe this evening and really pray about and talk about with your husband as well. What yearly goals do we have as a family? What yearly goals do we have for each of our children? And one of the things that I like to do in determining my yearly goals besides prayer and talking to my husband is really looking back over the past year and saying, what do I feel like I dropped the ball in? What areas did each particular child struggle in? Where were we struggling as a family? Those are the things that we probably need the most work on. Those are the things that I'm probably gonna make our yearly goals in the next school year. Hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear down below in the comments, what are your yearly goals for your family? And what are your yearly goals for each of your individual children? Share those in the comments below.